How do you avoid having a hacker file a tax return on your behalf? My name is Merrill Taylor with Tax Tutor. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. There has been a huge problem in this country with people hacking information and filing tax returns on behalf of others. Now, first off, you might look at that and say, hey, great, somebody filed my tax return for me. I don't have to. Well, the problem is when they file the tax return for you, they're putting in a lot of fraudulent information that turn that results in a really large refund that person then has that really large refund go into a bank account that they own and control and then they make off with the money and the government loses billions of dollars a year because of this fraud and these issues to combat that the irs has what's called an ip pin which is which stands for an identity protection uh, personal identification number so it helps to protect your identity and keep hackers and scammers and other people from stealing your identity and filing a tax return on your behalf and stealing a bunch of money from the government. Up until this point, uh, the only way to get an IP pin was that you had to have your identity stolen or you had to have something bad happen to you to begin with. The IRS finally uh, kind of came to the light and recognized that the best way to combat this is to be proactive rather than reactive. And they have now allowed anybody to get an IP pin. What an IP pin is, it is a six digit number that the IRS physically mails to you at the beginning of the year. So you get a letter from the IRS. It has a six digit number that is, that is unique to you, your name. Uh, each individual can get this. So if you file a, um, a joint return with a spouse. Each spouse can get their own IP pin. Uh, dependents can also get IP pins as well. And you get this IP pin from the IRS and then the IRS will not accept a tax return in your name and social security number unless this IP pin is matched to it. So the only way a hacker could get that information would be if they were stealing your mail or something because the IRS physically mails that. And so uh, the way that you get that is you go to irs.gov and then you search IP pin in their search box there and it will come up with a tool with, a, with a, a link of where you can go to apply for this IP pin. And then when you apply for that, at the beginning of the year, the IRS will send you a letter that has that six digit pin and then when you go and file your tax return, you enter that six digit pin into the tax software or you give it to your tax professional as they prepare your return. They'll put that in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the return there. And so when it gets filed, the IRS will match your name, your social security number and the IP pin. If all those match, then they will accept the return. If the IP pin does not match or it's missing, the IRS will reject it. And I know this because I have clients that have these IP pins and we go and file a tax return for them and they get rejected and the rejection code tells us that we're missing an IP pin. So then we have to go back to the client and get that. This ensures that no hacker or scammer will ever file a tax return on behalf of those clients, on behalf of those uh, people, because those hackers and scammers can't get that IP pin very easily. So if you would like to have the most protection you can with your taxes and making sure that nobody files on your behalf and creates a big issue, uh, I would encourage you to look at getting an IP pin. We've had people uh, that have had their identity stolen. So when we go and file a tax return, we get a rejection saying a return has already been filed on behalf of this person. Uh, the downside is if, they are, if that client is getting a refund, we then have to paper file a return because the IRS will only accept one tax return per year for, for a person. So if, if it gets rejected, uh, we can't then e-file it. So we have to print it all out, have everybody sign it, physically sign it, then it has to be mailed to the IRS. And then the IRS has to reconcile the real return that's filed with the fake return that was filed. And that takes a lot of time. And so we see that if you're set to get a refund, it could take months or even up to a year to get a refund if this happens. If you owe tax, it's usually not a big deal. Uh, you still have to print out the return and mail it in and send in a check or pay online. Um, so th that process isn't as bad. But if you're getting a refund, it could really significantly delay your refund from coming and then create all sorts of other issues since somebody has filed a fake return on your behalf. And now the IRS has to figure that out and work through that system. So if you'd like to avoid all that headache and trouble and, and stress, uh, going to irs.gov, searching IP pin and applying for that IP pin is a great way to do that. Uh, now, 
you don't necessarily have to do it for everybody that's included on that tax return because let's say um, that one spouse gets it, the other spouse didn't, d doesn't get it, and none of, this, none, of this, none of the dependents get it. Well, that's fine because the IRS is not going to accept a return with, any, with, with that spouse on it um, with, without that IP pin included. So everybody that's included in that return is kind of covered under one IP pin. Um, if you wanted to, you know, let's say you had two spouses, but they, for some reason they filed separately, um, you know, divorce or something happened there and they filed separate returns. Well, in that case, you would want two separate IP pins just to protect that. Or let's say a scammer or hacker just wanted to file a tax return on behalf of a, a spouse or on behalf of one person, uh, that could be an issue there. So having both spouses get that would, would, be, would be beneficial just to keep anybody else from filing a tax return on your behalf. And again, you can go to irs.gov and, uh, and get that there. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And uh, please hit like and subscribe as well.